Welcome back everyone to Sporting Logically. Today we are talking about five NBA players that you had no idea made an All-NBA team in their careers. I don't have anything against these guys, and they've each had really good seasons at one point or another in their careers to this point, but I doubt many people see them as one of the top 15 players in the league. Each player on this list only made the All-NBA team in one season in their career, and those will be the seasons I will be highlighting in this video. Let's go ahead and get started. Number one, David Lee, 2013 All-NBA third team. David Lee started his career with the New York Knicks, being selected late in the first round out of the University of Florida in 2005. While with the team, he experienced a surprising amount of success for a guy that was seen more of as a role player than a featured option coming into the NBA. In his fifth and final season in New York, Lee posted career highs in a number of categories and was named to his first All-Star team in the 2010 season. Following that season, Lee was an unrestricted free agent and was part of a sign and trade deal that sent him to the Golden State Warriors, where he continued the production he showed in his last few seasons with the Knicks. In 2013, he was named to his second All-Star team, which if you can believe it at the time, was the Warriors' first All-Star since Latrell Sprewell in 1997. After that season, Lee was named to the All-NBA third team. Though a lot of people don't remember him as an All-NBA caliber player because his success either came as part of some truly bad Knicks teams or on Warriors teams a few seasons prior to the now dominant version of the team we know today. In fact, Lee's struggles with injuries in the seasons following his All-NBA selection paved the way for an up-and-coming forward named Draymond Green to enter the starting lineup and become a key cog in the Warriors machine that now rules the league. Number 2. Joe Kim Noah 2014 All-NBA First Team Another former Florida Gator takes the second spot on this list. In the beginning of his career with the Bulls, Noah made a name for himself as a great defensive player and leader that brought energy and toughness to the court each night. Although seemingly always dealing with injuries and armed with one of the worst jump shot forms to ever make it to the NBA, Noah was a key contributor to those Tom Thibodeau and Derrick Rose era Bulls. In the 13-14 season, however, with Rose out for the season with yet another knee injury, Noah showed off his ability as one of the best passing big men in the league. He posted career highs in a number of categories on his way to being named to his second consecutive All-Star appearance and his first All-NBA selection, being named to the 2014 All-NBA first team. Each season afterwards saw Noah continue to struggle with injuries, but that didn't stop the Knicks from signing him to what may become one of the worst contracts in NBA history in the 2016 offseason. And this is a big reason that many people don't remember him as an All-NBA caliber player. After an uninspiring first year in New York, Noah has spent this season in a strange sort of limbo with the team, reportedly being involved in a physical altercation with head coach Jeff Hornacek, and has been away from the team while they try and figure out a way to either trade the former All-Star, or at the very least, get out from underneath his massive contract. Number 3. Andrew Bogut 2010 All-NBA Third Team Nowadays, many fans know Andrew Bogut as an important piece to the Warriors championship in 2015, as well as a player that has bounced around the league from the Mavericks, Cavs, Lakers, and now free agency. But what many people seem to have forgotten is that despite his near constant struggles with injuries, Bogut was a great player in his early years with the Milwaukee Bucks. Drafted number one overall out of Utah, he was named to the 2010 All-NBA third team, though strangely wasn't named to an All-Star in that season, nor any other season of his career. In that 09-10 season, Bogut continued the strong defensive play he was known for, and with added offensive development and responsibility, posted a career high in points per game and was one of the best two-way big men in the league at the time. In 2012, Bogut was traded to the Warriors in exchange for a package of players including Monte Ellis, a deal that allowed Steph Curry to grow into the player we know today, and gave the Warriors a defensive presence at the center spot that they had been lacking for years. Obviously, this all worked out very well for Golden State and that later team success in his career is a big reason that many people have forgotten about Bogut's All-NBA caliber play as a young buck. Number 4. Goran Dragic 2014 All-NBA Third Team A second round pick in 2008, Goran Dragic spent the early part of his career backing up Steve Nash for the Suns, and was seen by the team as a potential replacement at the point guard position once Nash's career was over. But the potential he showed as a young player also made him a valuable trade piece, something the Suns took advantage of in 2011 sending Dragic to the Rockets. The Slovenian point guard wouldn't be away from Phoenix for long, however, as he signed with the team once he became a free agent a season and a half later in the 2012 offseason. In the 13-14 season, he took his game to a whole new level, posting a career high in points per game and being named the NBA's 2014 Most Improved Player, along with being named to the All-NBA third team. Strangely, despite his success in Phoenix, 
Dragic had gone his entire career up to this point without appearing in the All-Star game, until being named as an injury replacement in 2018. And this is a big reason people don't recall him being named to an All-NBA team. It's difficult to think of a player as one of the best at their position across the entire league when they aren't selected as one of the best at their position in their own conference. Number 5. Al Jefferson, 2014 All-NBA third team. After going straight to the NBA out of high school and being selected in the first round by the Boston Celtics in 2004, Al Jefferson developed himself into one of the more polished and effective post scorers in the league in his time with the Timberwolves, Jazz, Hornets slash Bobcats, and Pacers. He went nine consecutive seasons averaging at least 16 points per game, and at his peak in Minnesota, had two monstrous back-to-back -back seasons averaging over 21 points and 11 rebounds per game. However, no season to this point has resulted in an all-star selection for Jefferson, though in the 13-14 season, he helped lead a young Bobcats team to the seventh seed in the Eastern Conference in a playoff appearance, all while posting his best per-game averages in years. Despite not being his best statistical season overall, the team success Jefferson contributed to in helping a team otherwise lacking in talent reach the postseason was a big difference compared to his best years in Minnesota on some truly awful Timberwolves teams, which is likely a big reason he was named to the 2014 All-NBA third team. Similar to Dragic, most people don't think of Jefferson as an All-NBA worthy player because of his lack of an All-Star selection, and his best skill, post-scoring, is also something that isn't emphasized much in the game today, nor is it something that generally gains a ton of fan notoriety these days, causing Jefferson's year being named as one of the best players at his position to be forgotten by most NBA fans. Thank you all for watching. If you liked the video, then leaving a like rating down below is a great way to let me know. If you didn't like it or have a discussion or question you'd like to bring up, I'd also love to hear from you guys in the comments section as well. Once again, thank you all so much, and I will see all of you guys next time.